many times have you heard the term stunning for the gram? Or have you seen people being accused on social media of presenting themselves other than what they truly are in real life? My name is Jennifer Mitchell Early. I help individuals and teams achieve organizational and personal success. And this is Leadership Matters. Today, we're talking about who is your public persona? Is the public you different than the private you? And if so, to what degree are you someone who is stunning for the gram? Are you someone who is pretending to be someone that you're not or to have things that you don't really have or to hold views that you really don't hold? Do you behave publicly in a manner that is not really true to who you are? Simply stated, are you living a shadow life where you publicly present yourself in one way, but privately live in another? We all have public selves. In addition to our public selves, we have a private self that is comprised of our self-awareness, self-concept, and self-esteem. Our public self is who we present to others, the person we want others to see. We actively create our public selves through our interpersonal communication and behavior. Our public and private selves both mirror and can be disconnected from one another. We are intentional about the public self that we craft or create. In other words, we're deliberate about what we allow or want others to see versus those things that we don't want others to see, otherwise known as our public face. Your face can be anything you want it to be, perky and upbeat, cool and level-headed, and tough as nails. We create different faces for different moments and relationships in our lives, such as our face as a parent, college student, coworker, or leader. Regardless of the form our face takes, whether it's dramatic, subtle, or strategic, or a genuine representation of our private self, a mask is designed to hide the self from others. We form a strong emotional attachment to our face because it represents the person we most want others to see when they communicate and relate to us. Sometimes after we've created a certain face, information is revealed that contradicts it, causing us to lose face. Losing face provokes feelings of shame, humiliation, and sadness. While losing face can cause intense embarrassment, it also causes others to begin to question whether the public self with which they are familiar is in fact a genuine reflection of our private self. Since losing face can damage others' impressions of us, maintaining face is extremely important. How can you effectively maintain face? Use words and actions consistent with the face you're trying to craft from one moment to the next and from one behavior to the next. Your communication and behaviors must complement your face rather than clash with it. Also, ensure that your communication behaviors mesh with the knowledge that others already have about you. If you say or do something that contradicts with what others know is true about you, they'll see your face as false. When something happens that causes you to lose face, promptly acknowledge that the event happened and take responsibility for any of your actions that contributed to it. Apologize for your actions and for disappointing others and move to maintain your face again. Apologies are fairly successful in reducing people's negative impressions and anger that may have been triggered, especially when such apologies avoid excuses and contradict what people know really happened. People who deny their inconsistencies or who blame others for their failures are judged much more harshly. Online communication provides us with unique benefits and challenges for self-presentation. When you talk with others face-to-face, -face, people judge your public self not just on what you're saying, but also on what you look like, your age, gender, clothing, facial expressions, and the like. Each of these cues provides others with information about who you are, independent from anything you might say. Similarly, during a phone call, vocal cues such as tone, pitch, and volume help you and your partner draw conclusions about each other. 
But during online interactions, the amount of information communicated visually, verbally, and non-verbally is radically restricted and more easily controlled. We carefully choose our photos and edit our text messages, email, direct messages, and profile descriptions. We still actively self-present in ways that make us look good without having to worry about verbal slip-ups, uncontrollable nervous habits, or physical disabilities that might make people judge us. People routinely present themselves online and in ways that amplify positive personality characteristics, such as warmth, friendliness, and extroversion. The freedom that online communication allows us in crafting ourselves comes with costs. Unless you have met someone in person, you'll have difficulty determining, determining whether their online self is authentic or a mask. Because of this, people often question the truthfulness of online self-presentations, especially overtly positive or flattering ones. To improve your public persona, first keep in mind that online communication is dominated by visual information, such as text, photos, and videos. Make wise choices in the words and images used to present yourself to others. Second, always remember this simple rule. What others say about you online is more important than what you say about yourself. Finally, subject your social media to the interview test. Ask yourself, would I feel comfortable sharing all elements of this profile, photos, personal profiles, videos, blogs, or tweets in a job interview? If your answer is no, modify your current online public persona. I have found that everybody doesn't need to know everything about you. You have the right to keep parts of yourself private. The problem comes when your public persona and private persona are at odds with one another, when you're not true to yourself. Over the years, it's helped me to think of myself not that this was by choice, but rather because I've lived in a fishbowl most of my life. But I think of myself as a personal brand. It's my brand that has kept me, one, true to myself and has given me the ability to always be able to look myself in the mirror and to allow me to be consistent, which has enabled me to garner trust and build relationships. I'm pretty much the same. My public and private persona mirror one another. I'm also transparent. I don't have a poker face. What you see is what you get. And so that's helped me to not be in positions where I've had to lose face. As long as you're authentic and true to yourself, I think it's okay to have a public persona. And two, to have parts of yourself that are private and off limits. Everything isn't intended for public consumption. See you next time.